what we're going to talk here, we've got some, some very experienced people who've been working with brands of different types and different levels. Um, uh, and what we're going to sort of quickly sort of talk about some of the kind of key issues, I guess, that we didn't discuss before. Uh, we've got some new arrivals that haven't been introduced, so maybe, maybe if you two lovely folk would like to introduce yourselves, I obviously know who you are, but, but maybe for everyone else you could tell, say who you are and what you do. My name is Devin Radford. I work at Fox. I handle mobile games. We mostly have a licensing business, but we're dabbling in other areas now as well. You're dabbling? That's dabbling. Good. I'm Macy Mills. I work at HitSense. We're a mobile game developer and publisher, and I run business development and strategy. Fantastic. And obviously, we have Dan from EA and, and David from uh, WG Sales. Um, so I guess I wanted to, we've got a lot of different kind of uh, brands represented here, really, kind of video games, sports. Uh, I know Macy, you kind of work a little bit with the CAA and maybe some celebrity stuff, you're a bit more aware of that. And obviously you have the odd TV and film license that you might be able to use. I guess the question is, can any AAA brand kind of, any big brand convert to mobile? Is, is, is any brand a good brand? I guess you said, David, earlier, you kind of suggested it probably, probably wouldn't be necessarily. Does anyone want to leap in on that? I just think uh, there's um, it, there's a lot of uniqueness to mobile, and you have to understand how transferring any brand to mobile may find new audience or lose a lot of the audience that you were hoping to to leverage onto mobile. So. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Would you, is, there, is there any brands that we, we can, I, mean, I guess we're not going to name names here, um, but I mean, we, we can see it, for instance, in, in, what, in kind of uh, Glue's approach. They've, they've, they've been very, very incredibly successful with, with, with Kim Kardashian, and then they've tried to repeat, repeat the trick with, with other, other celebrity brands, and it hasn't kind of really, hasn't really paid off in the same way. They had Katy Perry, they had uh, James Bond, they've got the other Kardashian sisters now. Is there kind of a reason why you think that's happening? Not to criticize Glue, but is that just because they've they got lucky the first time, or just because it's harder with celebrities? I don't know. I think it's not really fair to talk about this without Chris here. Well, he was, he was <laughs> supposed to be here. He's I know, I know. But no, but I, I, it's more that, not showing what they've done, but is, is there a reason why you know, this, the same thing doesn't work both, both times? Is it, is it execution thing, or is it more of a, that they were kind of lucky the first I, time? I think no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing games or other kinds of content, um, the content's got to fit the audience. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, maybe the gameplay patterns and the style of gameplay was, was more suitable to Kim Kardashian's audience and, you know, perhaps Katy Perry's audience just likes to sing with her. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I think you have to think very hard about that um, when you're making any kind of content, whether it's games or television shows or film. Um, and, you know, there's going to be an audience for one thing and they'll want to interact with their, their fans or the content in one way or or not in another. Sure. That's a vague answer for you. Sure, that's good. That's a good answer. I also think to some degree it's about how you activate that brand. Like you don't put a, you can't just put a brand on something and then just sit back and see it be amazingly successful. You have to activate that in a way that makes sense for the brand and for the audience. And I think Kim did a, like a pretty amazing job as to how much she did yeah. push that game. And uh, I think if you don't do that, then you don't get all the value necessarily. I think it helps that her fans are kind of cultish too. Yeah, They'll yeah. do whatever she says. So they do. Helped. It's, it's cultish. So the, the, the secret is to have people obey without without question. I like that. That's good. Yeah, but you can, well, sorry. You, I can also see. I mean, you, if you see a Katy Perry concert, she's followed by you know I don't know 60 million people on Twitter. Yeah. Something like that. But if, if you see her concert, she's got hundreds of screaming fans that are fainting. So they seem cultish to me too. So. It, I don't know. I, I don't know. If they, I don't think I know the answer, but I, yeah. I, I you know. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. It's not a criticism of Glue at all. It's yeah. just more of an interesting. You know, clearly that seems seems to be the way forward, and suddenly it doesn't seem as obviously the way forward uh, now as yeah. it did. Um, take away from kind of celebrity brands and, and about uh, kind of game IP. Um, obviously, uh, Bethesda were kind of. Uh, Pleasantly surprised by the success, I think, of kind of Fallout. Shay, I know the kind of marketing manager quite well. And they, they weren't expecting this to be their, their, their bigger revenue driver. It was really a marketing piece. Are, are you kind of surprised there's not been more kind of classic game IP brought after that? There's been a few things, but it's not really, it's not kind of been an avalanche of, 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 of going game IP coming to mobile, as in PC console. There's a lot of gauntlets at getting act. I mean, everybody's been scouring the earth for. Traditional, old, reminiscent <laughs> IP. Um, it's not a lack of it's not energy lack of or activity or no. trying. Uh, there's a lot of licensing gauntlets. There's a lot of financial gauntlets, and then you have all the things that are valid in terms of um, the creative effort that a good match for it. And then, of course, 
you know, as, as Dan mentioned, the participation of the brand to help you activate it properly and, and really execute it well. You add all that up and it's really tough to make deals happen. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you can't really make a game for a couple million dollars anymore, you know, produce it and then and, and publish it and have any kind of launch. So, you know, taking a big risk on what could potentially be a small or medium-sized hit, it's, it's challenging. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd argue that we, to some extent, we do it on sports as well. Like, we take a number of products that are HD-focused or historically PC-focused and turn them into mobile games uh, and have done and will continue to do that. So I think it goes beyond that. I also think, to your point, it costs more to build a game, and if it costs more, it takes longer. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see more of these things happening. It wasn't that long ago since Yeah, it's just the, the, yeah. Okay, so it I may take, it might take a, year it takes or two a while for people to copy and follow and, an and lead into something. Yeah, okay. Um, I think, I guess, one of the things is always interesting, which I always like to ask you when I'm on, on a phone, you're obviously a, a, a rights holder. You're, you're, you've got some relatively big brands and you work with independent developers or you know, maybe your own, own studios to, to create games. So how, what is it that you're looking for as a kind of brand holder from a partnership? Because you know, the other guys are more about creating games, obviously own, own brands, but what is it from your side you look for? for, a public, for a you public mean public. besides money? Besides money. That was a joke. That yeah. was a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice because, <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, I, I feel lucky that I get to work with all these great brands. I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of a lot of the stuff that we work with. Um, the, the first thing we look for is passion, honestly, um, and, and a fit with the content. It, it, when we find studios that are so psychotic about, you know, look, Tinyco is a great example with Family Guy. Um, their team was obsessed with the, with the show. They they were they had encyclopedic encyclopedic knowledge. Um, you just could tell that they were going to take care of the brand and really make it come alive on mobile, and they did it. So um, that's the number one thing we look for, and then a whole bunch of things after that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that's a good uh, a good answer. And I guess from the flip side, I mean, David, your talk was really really good, and I it was really interesting the way you were kind of thinking about holistically all the different. Aspects of a thing around a brand and, and the is it a Q score? Is that, and that's something I'm going to go and check out now. But um, so uh, it, when it comes to kind of evaluating brands, how uh, and, and to, to, to maybe work with or partner, how how does that work? Do you, do you go through a process of, of yeah, various you know, scores I mean, or something? It, it, I'm not sure how far we can go. It may be somewhat of a false positive to think I can increasingly quantify the value of a brand. Uh, as as Devin points out, there's a passion. There's a you know. If you, if you pitch our games business to any investor, a good person are going to just walk away and say, it's a his space business and not interested. Yeah. And we've gotten to the point now where we can test, take metrics, and improve our chances of some level of financial performance and success. Yeah. And there's big mistakes we can avoid. But there's still a hit based element that you just can't factor. So we're going to try as hard as we can to quantify the value of a brand based on every click and behavioral score and and algorithmic approach we can but at the end of the day there is a a big element of breathing passion into the brand and be breathing passion into the consumer experience and having that payoff and an emotional connection that you can't quantify yeah and I think I think the buy-in from the brand is super important too because if they're passionate about your game idea, then you can work out a good deal and have a great relationship. And obviously, the more the brand is into it, the more marketing is involved and all of that. It's just it's definitely you know just a partnership from both sides. Both sides being extremely into the idea and kind of blazing forward together on it. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned marketing. It's an interesting thing. I mean, it's 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 kind of said. Um, in a realistic way, maybe a cynical way, that, that brands as uh, part of the, you know one of the reasons that people are going with brands and desperately looking for brands is, is the shortcut to marketing. That's the number one kind of rationale I'm often told by in discussions in bars usually about. It. But is, is that is that really the case, or I mean, you know, there's, there's, is it purely about kind of getting into 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 kind of audiences and cutting down your, your UA costs, or is that just a small component of the whole? Difficult question. Small, large, primary, you know, pick your term. Um, it has to be because there's a financial cost both up front. There can be a huge creative cost um, in terms of your freedom and building the game you want to build because now you've got brand owners that um, have an interest in what you're going to build. In fact, I should probably uh, go back one question and, and say it goes both ways. Um, 
in a previous life, this was more apparent than uh, it takes so long to make games. You know, I've maybe got, I don't know, a dozen or so big brand game things behind my belt. But in a previous life, we worked with TV production teams uh, to create a company called GoTV, a bunch of video on mobile. And the production teams all had very different levels of passion for putting something on mobile. And so it goes both ways. You have to be passionate about their brand, and you have to really um, take great care of it and uh, breathe uh, your creative juices into it. But they have to be equally excited about this new frontier of opportunity and it gets into the activation. How are they going to help you? How are they going to work with you on the creative, approve things, get, be responsive, be engaged, and be helpful? Right? Yeah. So it goes both ways. If they're not entirely passionate and they see it as, eh, it's just kind of a little bit of gravy and, you know, as long as it's hands off for us, we don't care. A lot of times you can't achieve the result you're looking for. Yeah. But I think the, the UA cost, getting back to that question, um, the economics are so high on CPI right now that that has to be your, pri I would just use the word primary yeah. um, economic benefit. Um, certainly, um, these other things factor into it, but um, it, it's the biggest financial piece. Yeah, I and mean, it's interesting talking about the relationship with the, well, you know, the, the close relationship re required with the, the, the brand or the, the, the content which you. So obviously, like, you, you know, EA is, couldn't be more sort of into these kind of sports now. You're like, everywhere. I, I've got another business works the Premier League a bit, and I know that EA is in, into yeah. everything. Really. I mean, it's a, it's a big part of what we do. I and mean, obviously for sports, I, I don't, personally, I don't believe you, I think it's very difficult to be in sports without some form of brand license or type yeah. relationship. I think, and only because that's really, at least in the world of sport, that's what means authenticity. Yeah. So if you're not licensed, all of a sudden you're not really true to the sport. And therefore, in terms of going back to that world that you're trying to immerse people in, it's just not authentic to the world. So people yeah. can't connect with it as deeply. So I think for sports, it's very difficult to break through without some form of license. I actually don't see it as a shortcut. I think it, I just see it as a base requirement for, uh, for authenticity as well as just for the story and the fiction of putting together yeah. a sports property. Um, it doesn't make things easier. To your point, uh, David, it often makes things harder in terms yeah. of the type of game you want to build. Um, but I think it's you know, almost a minimum price of entry, at least in the sports context. There was a, there was a Japanese sports developer that necessarily have all the official licenses. I, don't they, know, I can't remember yeah, the name of them a, now. Yeah, They're yeah, quite it's small. Not an exclusive, uh, <laughs> exclusive. Yes, there's a number of products throughout the world that don't have licenses. But you, yes. but you, you, yeah. you, you won that. That's good. Um, of course, I'll go back to the Baywatch volleyball earlier. Yeah, yeah, also side because that certainly was yeah, well, a legitimate sports brand, but killed. Very associated with the world of volleyball, Baywatch. They're I've very been trying to download that since I heard about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one. Point, Related to that, which kind of, as you were saying it, it kind of it sprang to mind. Is I, I remember, I remember at one point there were like f five or six Cristiano Ronaldo uh, branded games. Not to, to out, I don't know his lawyers come after me, but 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 basically, I, I kind of leads another question. Is there kind of a danger of where we're in a space where like other people are competing for licenses? Like famously, kind of Warhammer at one point had about twelve licensed kind of games in production or something. It's is that a kind of a, a danger? Because yeah, you're using that because you want to stand out, but then someone else is doing it. I mean, it's even here we've got... Uh, like saying I have dead. a Warhammer license? What? <laughs> you have a Warhammer, sorry. <laughs> no, but you have... Yeah, a, there's, a, there's a lot of really well executed or, you know, heavily executed brands out there. Yeah. And I do think they can get watered down, and that's part of your calculus. Yeah, so you kind of watch down that. Yeah, we, we have a really hard time with that. We obviously we have got a lot of popular brands and some big hits on mobile and a lot of interest. Um, so yeah. we're, we're paying a lot of attention to Windows and making sure we're not launching things on top of each other. But we actually think that a, a lot of our brands have room to have more than one game uh, in, some, in some select cases, um, as long as you're you know, really differentiating and creating. Yeah. You know, I think there's room for a Family Guy soccer game, personally. But Simpsons Series 1, Simpsons Series 2. You yeah, can just exactly. <laughs> I think it's a little bit cliche, but I think the game has to be a good game, which is super cliche to say that. But uh, like, like the, the volleyball game, I imagine, was I, probably the best executed. I, I'm actually going to disagree with that. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not going to name names, but we can list a dozen games right now that are financially performing, and they're... Average games. We any, haven't mentioned any of them. Yeah. We haven't mentioned any of them in this conversation already. I'm sure there's not there's not one. I mean, brand uh, some of these brands have done such a great job of pulling a game forward, and it's not a bad game, but it, you know, it's either it's a straight copy or it doesn't bring any innovation at all. Um, it's a very safe thing, but the brand has clearly 
um, allowed it to perform above the noise. I don't have any games like that. <laughs> no, but our, it's not that our games aren't, aren't uh, speaking specifically about our big biggest hits, the, the Simpsons and, and Family Guy. They're they're not meant to be this, the game. There's no gameplay. It's it's like these are really just content aquariums, if you want <laughs> to use the term. Uh, yeah, but they're quite meta about that. They're quite they're, they're well, riffing on the whole thing. They've done it. Yeah, they are. The Simpsons did. Um, but uh, you know, in both cases. They're, the content is done is executed so well. The writing is is on mm. point. The writers from the show, you know, everything is 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 done to the highest level of the of the brand, and and people want to interact and 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 play in that in that world. So so yeah. So I'm getting one piece of advice that's kind of coming kind of is, is that if you're going to go with a brand, if you're looking for a partner, you want a brand that's going to engage with the whole process, not just sell your brand and wander off. Because yeah, without that s support, it's kind of hard to, to do. And an interesting thing, like, some of these questions are suggested by our team. And one of, the, one of the questions, we do a lot about soft launch. We're always looking for the interesting thing in soft launch and what's the next cool game. And our, you know, Clash Royale is interesting, it's popped up. But how do you kind of soft launch a, a AAA like branded game? It's kind of quite hard to quietly put out there this because you know, wow, the fans want to get a whiff of it. They've got a whiff of it. It's not, it's not one of those things that you know you can. Keep yeah, quiet. Even, even World of Tanks, we couldn't hide that soft launch at all. Yeah. It was like it's out, okay, and uh, so you can't experiment with it as much because you don't want to have a negative, you know, message sent to that game community at all about your brand. Um, so it, it limits what you can learn from TMR, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, we just do it. Uh, we, like with Family Guy, we tried to we tried to hide it. Um, it was up on Reddit within like 20 minutes, and we tried to like shut it down. And then we got bad press. It's like <laughs> if you need to soft launch the game, which now you do with free play, um, you just do it. And you just have to. Yeah, and you you know try and keep it out of the big territories and hope that you know you have a bit of runway. But at the end of the day, you need you need that data before you go global. So uh, depending on the game, of course, but. Yeah, most of the games that we're doing now need, need soft launch. It's also hard when you run into scenarios where your main fans aren't where you're soft launching. Like okay. if it's a very, you know, American brand and you're trying to soft launch in Europe, and maybe they're not as interested or they're not as engaged because they just don't care about the brand. So yeah. you can run into problems there. As I guess well. you're not really and learning yet what the brand is yeah, going to be. The whole exactly. thing. Exactly. Right? No, well, that's well, that's that's the question, Jenna, the question I was going to ask. Um, and again, David, you brought it up earlier, and, and it's kind of a, a topic we bring up at a lot of our conferences: is the, the is international nature of the uh, the industry, like the mobile industry. You know, four of the top five are on you know Western markets. It's uh, uh, and if you kind of cater in Southeast Asia now as well, that's probably yeah, it's, it's, it's even more. So, uh, do you you know brands? Very few brands kind of resonate equally in all regions. So. You know, how, how how does that factor in your thinking? You know, is it just that you you, you accept that you're gonna just it's gonna exist just in, in the certain territories, or? I mean, I'm sure for all of us, we try to get the most global brands that we can, but you know, there's definitely ones that are more Western-based, etc. But it's just you know evaluating it and making sure it makes sense for your game and as global as possible. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the way it's uh, informed our strategy is the. It's hard to publish a game in APAC uh, from Seattle, in our case, or anywhere else that's not in APAC. Um, there's a lot of uh, local game as a service. There's um, beyond just translating and, and truly localizing game. And now there's understanding of local brands. So it's just pr created another reason why we need a strong partner to be successful in Asia in general and is uh, going to point us to working with stronger partners and having them bring us brands that make sense to their geographic you know, expertise. Okay. With a yep. couple of our sports games, sorry, we uh, a lot of them do have some genuine kind of global appeal, and what we try to do is partner with, so we don't just partner with one league, for example, in, in a soccer context, we'll, we'll partner with a number of leagues throughout the world so we can then leverage those leagues, and then we use our live service engine to put content into the game that's relevant for that location, so we'll focus on uh, the league, the performance of the league, the, the players, the teams that are doing well at any given stage in the La Liga versus the Premier League versus sure. whatever it is, um, and that's where we feel that we're able to engage people at a global level, but also in a way that's relevant locally. And you guys are uh, launching FIFA Iceland edition this week, right? There's a, the, we're not talking about Iceland at the moment. It's, still, yeah. it's too raw. The Everybody sister. is. No, 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 we're not. So has anybody picked up Brexit, right. the brand? Yeah, that would be, be the latest. That's kind of trending at the moment. Um, I, w I wish we could capitalize on that. Do I, yeah. That, so and had there's got to be some good it. come out of it. I'm feeling like, I was betting on the other vote as well as yeah. most of the world. So. We're all poor. That's fantastic. Um, 
I, I, again, like not everybody, you, you guys, you know, in, in really the top level of brands, you kind of look in the top of sports leagues, massive PC brands, amazing kind of uh, love TV and, and, and film. Like when it comes to kind of working with with uh, smaller brands or niches that maybe have kind of millions of fans rather than, than billions, you know, is it's just such a stupid question, but is that still sort of valuable? Is that still useful? Because obviously smaller developers and publishers don't necessarily have the luxury of shopping at, you know, at the, the very highest uh, level. Is it still, is it, do you still get like a, an element of the success or is it so watered down it's not worth doing? I think that's the beauty of mobile is, you know, in, in the glory days of console licensing, uh, you kind of saw that going down as, as uh, development costs went, went up. Yeah. Um, and mobile is beautiful because you can you can license a brand that has a small core audience that is obsessed with the brand. I mean, look at Adventure Time is an example of uh, of a small brand that's made a lot of games that people love, right? Yeah. Um, so I think there's an opportunity to have. A, 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 I mean, that's not a small brand. I love that. Sorry, <laughs> not as big as others. Um, no, fair enough. But yeah, I think there's. Look, I want to. I want to make a Home Alone game. I think. I think that's going to be successful. So anyone out there want to do that with me? Um, Apparently, Macaulay's available for work at the moment. Sure is. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, I think, I think it's just a lower barrier to entry, or at least it used to be on mobile than, than in the console days. So, yeah, um, yeah you can do it. I made myself Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I, you see a lot of players out there with yeah, older brands or kind of uh, yeah, more, more niche things. It's, and it, it, I, I just don't know. It's not clear to see how successful it is. Are you going to talk about the brands you're working with, Macy? You're not, are you not allowed to? Damn it. Shortly, not yet. Though. Shortly. Soon. Was it next? When is it? When is it? When's the, your first? Your, your next one coming out? Month? Uh, soft launch next month. Soft launch yeah. next month. Okay. Don't want to break the news here at Pocket Game. It's Gamer an Connect. opportunity. You can, you can do it. We'll put it on the. I don't side. want to get in trouble. Okay, fine. Um, I guess uh, going to a practical time. What what sort of key uh, bits of advice or kind of key uh, techniques or approaches would you kind of advise for for developers looking to work with? Brands. Is there anything and any absolute do's or don'ts that, that, that you should, regardless of the of the brand, you get people. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, I, I would say again, just have the passion and you know coming in looking for you know a marketing play or you know just a brand slap is is not going to be helpful. I think it's really show that you want to create something that's additive to the brand and and makes use of it and and yeah. will speak to the audience. That's that's the most important thing. And do people come to you all the time? You constantly get in pictures or you go? You I mean, you know, I'm always at these things. So yeah, you are. I'm always very, yeah, you're always. <laughs> I think it's a, a combination. I mean, we're we're always out looking for for great partners and um, we get a lot of pitches unsolicited as well. But so so it's, it's really classic. Clash Royale plus Family Guy you're looking for next. We are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Clash Royale plus anything. How did you know that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I just. Genius. I've been working on an idea, but I, mean, I, I guess from 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 your side, like, how do you how do you find it, like? From the developer side, how did you find yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think I just echo what we were saying earlier, which is just make sure that the brand is kind of all in as well and try to get as much marketing in that contract as you can uh, and as much exclusivity, but it, it gets hard depending on who you're working with. Um, but I think another thing that, that isn't thought about a lot is, you know, you're going to hopefully get a feature if you have a branded IP when it comes out. Yeah. And then there's a lot of a lot of this going on in the IP based mobile because you're having to pay out to the brand depending on the accounting terms and the contract every 60 days or 90 days or 180 days. So just taking that into consideration when you're kind of putting together your, your user acquisition budget that those checks are going to be going out and trying to figure out how you can kind of keep your user acquisition here or here, hopefully, rather than the up and down yeah. motion that we see sometimes. I think one thing that we try to think about is not just is the is the brand going to be added to the game, which I think it has to be, but also brands bring communities to your property. They sure. you know, have engaged community, uh, and those people have expectations sometimes. So, like Dungeon Keeper is a great example where those consumers or those players yeah. had you know, some very fixed expectations of what a property for that would mean, and and what they got was different to that, and then you have an issue. So, and it's it's as true in sports, and that's why we struggle a little bit for the long time and we try to understand now what people expect from a sports game but in a mobile context and everybody that are attached to a brand come with a preconceived expectations so trying to understand that and put something in front of them that kind of answers that but in an effective way is is pretty important yeah, yeah I share an example how I got uh, badly outsmarted um, in the a uh, couple versions of this mobile gaming business ago and we, we got smart about it and um, the the biggest tip I can give anybody out there, a, a lot of people I think in this audience are probably uh, characterized as indies and probably don't have a lot of money and can't 
afford a big high risk profile to put a bunch of um, energy, time, and, and money into a, a large brand. But e even EA has been really smart, and we, we forget how they went to a, a fairly obscure talent in the NFL, Madden, and created an, an amazing brand out of a retired coach broadcaster that just didn't appear to be the guy you'd build a, an NFL yeah. franchise around. And that was very creative. Um, we went to Paramount and we asked for a 21-year-old movie that hadn't been licensed around anything called Top Gun. This was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Top Gun did exceptionally well for us all over the world. This is back Java games, you know, hit six to go right, four to go left. Just awful game exactly. But the brand was fantastic. Yeah. And it cost us nothing if we agreed to do Italian Job, which was their new movie that they were about to release. And um, so we took that on and, and paid a royalty on that. We got Top Gun for free, and it wanted to be you know, fantastic. Wow. Um, on the sports side, uh, we didn't. And so I've been in the indie mode as much as I've been in a, a mode where I can talk about real sizable deals. We had to be creative. Uh, we found the most recently retired players we could yeah. that still had solid brands. Their agents tell them, look, you got two years before nobody even remembers you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So we did so Barry everything. Sands football. <laughs> we did Sergei Fedorov hockey. We did Barry Bonds baseball when he was in the hiatus over the steroids. Yeah. And his brand was still very high, but he was outside of MLB so we could talk with him directly. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot more efficient. So there are creative ways okay. to find brands that have untapped value or you know great value you can build on. And yeah. I'm not saying you're going to create a Madden franchise. We didn't with Sanders and Federoff but and yeah, was, Barry Bonds, but we did very well. Yeah. So is there any, Home any, Alone. Any, 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 any plans for, 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 for Roy Hodgson FIFA? <laughs> uh, not, not, nothing immediate for Roy. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's but, but they'll ta he'll take your call right now. Yeah, yeah I will. I, he'll take anyone's call. Bless him. Um, uh, I'm sure the calls aren't very nice that he's taking most of the time, to be frank. So uh, we've got just a couple of minutes left. So I want to kind of throw out, see if we've got any, any kind of questions from the audience. So there's a, come on, I know you're still, you're still kind of struggling from the night before. There's a question, that, oh, is that a question in the back or you just put your arm up? He's just stretching his head there. No, oh, that was, okay, Josh has got a question. I just showed up, so hopefully I don't know how to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, how's it going? So I mean, I think for a lot of the tier one IPs, obviously the cost structure has continued to increase. I mean, how do you guys see the trend for those business terms uh, sort of either stabilizing? I think in the sense that sometimes it's, when you think about marketing costs and Apple, Google, like sometimes the sort of uh, st business structure is very difficult to make any type of profit. Um, do folks feel like? Things are still rising in terms of the uh, business terms, or things are maybe stabilizing. Have we reached kind of the peak from that perspective? I, I might offer a un, a surprising positive. I think the the brands are asserting themselves, and the value of a brand's ability to get organic downloads um, is going up relative. Um, and so I think there's an economic equilibrium that's kind of maintained. Um, the CPI costs are so high on your own with an unbranded um, title and the value of App Store promotion has diminished greatly that the value of a brand's ability to download for you is, is actually higher now. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you. Good answer. Uh, no, we're, we're keenly aware of it, too. I think, you know, our... But they're all overpriced. <laughs> Our, our models changed <laughs> considerably. We, you know, there was a time where we needed big MGs and high royalties, and that was kind of the only model we we, we took. And now we're, you know, we're, we're aware of this. And you know, if the business doesn't work for both parties, it doesn't work. So, um, you know, I think we we always try to make things uh, mutually beneficial and hopefully grow the business. And we want to incentivize our partners to grow the business as much as they can. So. Uh, no, I don't think the cost structures are are getting out of hand. I think we're we're <laughs> all, we're all probably. becoming we're all becoming more enlightened about about these businesses and and partnering with with the right teams to to make great products. Okay, I have, I have one kind of final question. Just um, I guess it's brands going the way we've we obviously had. Recently, in the last month, we've had two uh, game brands become major mo motion pictures, I believe you say, in this part of the world. So Angry Birds done very well, and, 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 and kind of Warcraft was very big. You think this, the games to 
the games to mainstream brand is, is, uh, is something that's going to continue. I, I'd, be, I'd be amazed if there's not some sort of clash related thing from Supercell at some point. Yeah, I think Activision is going to do it first, right? They're going to have Skylanders and then we're going to see that's on Netflix and then we'll see um, Call of Duty will be a feature film in the next couple of years. Yeah, so got, and actually Assassin's Creed's coming out this summer, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, this uh, December. When's, world of, when's the world of tanks? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we did a a uh, fairly last minute haphazard tie-in with Fury, which was yeah. a tank game. So we're we're inching down those inching down those, those paths as well. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. Well, um, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I appreciate your time, and especially after a very quiet night last night. So, um, can I have a big round of applause for our panel, please. Thank you. I'm going to let you go off and enjoy your day. You'd have to applaud yourself. Thanks, guys. That's brilliant. Okay.